they undertake clinical skills training in the clinical skills lab and alongside that they have a sustainability skills session. So they, they're given a scenario that is um, linked to um, an it items that are used every day in clinical practice and we get them to discuss what would happen to clinical practice or in clinical practice if that item were no longer available. Yeah, so the single-use items, yeah. what, how often you use one of these? Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. In a day? In a day. In a day. Oh. In a day. How many might you use in a day? I have no idea. Yeah, three, four. Four. Some, some days you might not use any. Yeah. So yeah. Fair. You know, it's, it's not. In the hospital, they're using them every day, all yeah. the time. And what's really interesting is that the number of them who actually don't make the connection between plastic and oil. So that's that's the first thing that we that we notice is that once they then make the connection between oil and plastic, and the fact that they're using items a lot in everyday practice that are made from plastic and that oil may no longer be available to make these things, there's a bit of a light bulb moment and, and they really get it. We'll move that down to the bottom. Okay, so this is our impact scale. Okay. So we've got high impact and low impact on patient care and service delivery. If you didn't have plastic to make this oxygen mask from, what impact would that have on patient care? What would you do if you didn't have the plastic? Yeah. You wouldn't be able to I'd never it. Yeah. I just use it and I don't think. No, no. no. Yeah. That's it. We use these things all the time. We don't really I don't think there's anything we can substitute it for either. What do you think they used to use before plastic? Mm -hmm. Any of you watch Call the Midwife? No. <laughs> Start watching it and then you find out what they could use, what you could use. We used to use rubber. So the oxygen masks were made from rubber which was well, particularly for children, um, is horrible because they're, they're dense. Yeah. So you've got again, black, not that black green rubber. Well, because you have to fell trees to get the rubber. Well, you tap the trees, you don't, you don't fell the trees. So it's potential. One of the challenges of making sustainability relevant to nursing is um, making sure that they can understand how it's relevant to their practice. So what we've done, based on the research that we carried out in Cornwall in the NHS, is we've developed scenarios around potential interruption to supply for key items that are used in everyday clinical practice. And looking at those items that are used and the potential for um, having an impact on patient care if those items were no longer available. Do you, do you put them on with every patient? Yeah. 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 The official yeah. line is you have to wear yeah. that and that's part of your PPE, that's the official line. It might yeah. We've got to wear them with our patients. Do you need to wear them? Yeah. Well, no. You are the only you don't. procedure in the state. Who like tells you? Who is it that's actually saying that you, you must wear gloves? No, but tell us it's appropriate, and I'm hey, sure that I, I'm sure it's not. <laughs> it you don't have to for BP. Okay. I'm certain you don't. Positive. These are coming out as degree students. See, they will come out with a degree, and we expect them to be questioning, and we encourage them to question, not to not to do it in any aggressive way or anything, but just just to question. And as students, that's how they're going to learn. She's just a nice little elderly lady that's fallen over. She just needs a hand into her chair. You don't really want gloves because it, and not just that, it catches on their skin and can, you know, so just a nice hand touch, nice warm hand, just to help her up and hold her hand while she, while you settle her down, take her blood pressure and all that. It's not, it's not needed, I don't. What we do when they come in initially is we give them a questionnaire asking about their attitudes towards sustainability. So they fill the questionnaire in first and then they engage in the session and then we evaluate the session at, at the end and we, we just get amazing results. So to begin with, um, what they're saying is that, you know, perhaps it's not that important, then after the session they see it as, as very important. So what we've demonstrated is that, well, two things really, their attitudes towards sustainability in health um, change significantly. So they, they essentially become more convinced that it's important in healthcare and that it's important in the nursing curriculum. But we also test knowledge around the, uh, the cost of disposing of clinical waste compared with domestic waste because clinical waste is much more expensive and a lot of the time the wrong thing goes in the clinical waste bag. It's £5.18 5kg bag of clinical waste and it's £1.92 for 
domestic waste. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's, that's a, there's a light bulb moment when they realise that all those newspapers that go in the clinical waste bag are costing a lot of money, but also it's, it's costing in terms of carbon emissions to incinerate that clinical waste. So it's really opened my mind a lot and actually um, it's given me a great idea for a research project that I want to do. Yeah, it's definitely made me question how we do things and how I work. And I, it, it has been very useful and, it, and like I say, it's made me see that I think I'm very wasteful, <laughs> to be honest. And it's just, this packaging is quite difficult when you open it, so you just want to take care when you're doing it. Sustainability requires a multidisciplinary approach. So we recognise that by talking to student nurses about the potential interruption to supply for key items used in the NHS, that they're not going to be able to solve the, solve the problem themselves. They are part of the solution, but we need other disciplines. So we decided to bring design students into the clinical skills sessions and they observe the student nurses carrying out uh, their clinical procedures, they ask some questions, and um, they look at the extent to which they can come up with uh, sustainable design solutions. We put quite a bit of commitment into embedding sustainability in our curriculum and we're always looking for ways to make that relevant and exciting for the students and so if we can find um, collaborative practice that shows that this is um, shared thinking, that shows that other people are thinking about the same things, maybe from a slightly different perspective, but collectively um, we can address what are quite complex and challenging issues um, in a way that doesn't seem heavy and doesn't seem always about a disaster scenario. It can actually be about opportunities and about opportunities to improve the world we live in. Five ideas in five minutes. So, here are your machines. And they've come up with some fantastic ideas and they've, they've, they've been a real range of things and it's really opened my eyes to you know, the, the real value in, in working with, with other professions um, in trying to find solutions to, to some of these problems. The idea is to prevent you being contaminated by whatever's on the patient. Okay. So all you actually need is a barrier yeah. so do you to really stop use... your skin getting anything into it. So do you use any like barrier creams at the moment? No. no. Not at all. It could just be like a, a creamy kind of thing that just sits on your skin. Yeah. Like spray on plasters. Yeah. We've already got um, one product that we're, uh, we're starting to commercialise, um, which is one of the students designed um, a training tool. So we now have a, like a, an iPad version of, of a training tool with the skills um, embedded in this, this teaching pack. Um, we have another uh, two prototype designs that we're starting to develop um, to market. Uh, to commercialisation that, that the students last year developed. And I think by actually getting our students involved at an early stage, they're going to be the, our you know, staff of the future. They are the, our, our healthcare professionals of the future. And if we can instil in them these sorts of um, considerations, these, these values and so on, um, and getting them just thinking about some of the issues to do with sustainability early, that, that you know they can start to have an impact in their own practice as students, but once they qualify, they can take that on into their practice in the future as well. In comes Simon Cowell and Simon Cowell's sidekick. So this has been a really good experience, and it's just great to see how, um, from thinking of, of uh, you know sustainability and climate change, we know it's important for health, but it's a case of you know how can we embed that in the curriculum and we really think that we've got a, a really good way to do that now because we can make it really relevant to, to clinical skills and clinical practice. The idea is um, spray on gloves. Spray on, spray on gloves. Yeah. Especially if you work with children, if you go up to the children and say, oh, I'm going to do some work with you today, what colour gloves would you like me to wear? <laughs> and they can come up like their own little things, like want blue fingers or... <laughs> Brilliant.